Hello, you wonderful people. We are finally back inside the Teddy Daycare, and we have got a lot to get done. But first of all, I thought we'd have a look at this death animation. So if I join the game here, and we allow the Teddy to kill us, we can see it's looking a little bit lacklustre. He does the animation, kills us, and he walks off, and it's all a bit boring. So instead, I thought we'd see if we could get something a bit more jazzy, like you've seen in the intro. Now, the first thing I'd like to do is to make the screen fade to black. So I'm going to go into the starter GUI, add in a new screen GUI, we'll name it Death GUI, why not? And we're going to add in a frame, okay? Now this frame, is we're just going to make this completely black so it fills the screen. So we'll change the color to black, we'll make its position 0, 0, and then we want its size to be fully across, so 1, 0, 1, 0 and it will completely fill the screen like that. Now, bear in mind, this won't actually fill the screen fully. If I click play here, you'll notice that we've got this bar along the top for the Roblox's default GUI elements. So we actually want it to completely fill it up. And we can simply do that by adding in a border pixel. So if I click on it here while the game's running, and we just give it a border size of 100, say, then we can nicely fill that gap there. And then we're just going to set the transparency to 1 for now. So it's fully transparent. But when the player dies, we want to set that to 0. How are we going to do that? We're going to add in a local script, of course. We'll name the script uh, death local. And then we're going to write a new function here. So we'll get rid of this, of course. And then what we want to do is we want to wait until the player's humanoid dies. So we can detect this on the local script by first creating a variable for the player. Then we can get their character, local character will equal player dot character, or if it is not there yet, we can wait for the character to be loaded in. Then we can simply get the humanoid from that character. Now we've got all of these, we can attach the event to when the humanoid dies. So this event will fire whenever they die. We can just test this out with a simple print statement, print dead so let's go and run that and see what happens i've got my output window down here let's run over to the teddy see if we get the message there we go we've got dead appeared in the output for us so now we want to make this frame we want to change it from fully transparent to uh, completely opaque so it's black what we're going to do back into our script here now of course we could just change the transparency with just one value we could say script dot parent dot background transparency and just set it to zero straight away. But I would quite like to have a slow fade to the black. So we're going to use tween service for that. Let's start off by creating a variable for tween service. And then we can use that to create our tween. Local death fade will equal tween service. And we'll start creating one. The first thing we need is the object that we're going to tween. So that would be script.parent. Then next up, we need the, the type of tween we want. We've seen in some of the previous episodes all the settings we can apply. But for this one, we just want it to be a simple one second fade. So we just can say tween info dot new. And instead of doing all sorts of settings, we can just type one inside the brackets there. I'll zoom out a bit so you can see more. And then finally, the property we want to change. So we wrap that in these curly brackets and we say background transparency and we set that to zero okay so all of this is for the death fade and then now we've defined this inside the death fade variable we can just tell it to play so let's give that a run shall we and there we get our fade out perfect and of course, when we respawn, we're completely back to normal. Okay, so that's not a bad start, but let's see if we can add to that a little bit. Now, if I want to change the camera or maybe add some sound effects, these aren't going to run until the player has died, remember? Now, ideally, we could do with some code that would run before they die. So let's see if we can add another function here. Local function, and we'll just call it death effect. We all just want this to run just a little bit before we actually kill them. Now, if you remember inside our AI script over here, we have this attack function. 
It's line 58 in my code. And down in this code block is where all the fun happens. We play the animation first of all, and then we actually kill the player by setting their health to zero. Now, this is in my big AI script, but you could just have this inside a touched event. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that this animation has actually finished. Wait for it to stop playing before we kill them. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to actually run this function over here in our local script before we kill them off. So how can I communicate from the server script to the local script? Well, of course, I'll be using a remote event. So I'm gonna go over to replicated storage, click the little plus icon and add in a remote event. And we'll just call this uh, player death, shall we? And then I'm gonna fire that from the server. So before we even run the animation, we'll access it first of all. Next up, we need to fire this towards a specific player. So we'd say fire client, and then we would give the name of the player. Now, if you remember, we don't actually know the player. All we know is the target, which is the player's character. So in order to get the character, we can use a function for that. Character is the target, so we copy and paste that in. And now our player is gonna equal the player's character, and we can fire that event. So let's just check this is working first of all, shall we? So we'll just print off inside the death effect function, print event fired, add an exclamation mark, and then we're gonna to need to set this up inside the local script. So first of all, let's access that player death event. We can in fact just copy and paste this line over, copy this, paste it in here. And now player death dot on client event. I'm just gonna connect it to the death effect function. So this function is triggered by the humanoid dying event, and this function is triggered by this remote event being fired. So let's play and check everything's working first of all. Ugh, what am I doing? And like an absolute idiot, I put server storage. So let's change that to replicated storage real quickly. There we go, replicated storage and replicated storage over here as well. Now, in case you're wondering, the reason we put it in replicated storage is because this is copied over onto both the client and the server, so it's replicated, whereas server storage is just on the server. So let's give that another test. See the teddy, it's gonna attack us, and we got that event fired down in the output, so we know it's all working perfectly. So how about we add some camera effects now? So if we head into our local script, we can add a variable for the camera, and then we can start changing some properties of it down in this function here. So camera dot camera type first of all. We have to just change that to scriptable. Enum dot camera type dot scriptable, which will allow us to make changes. And then we can change its position using camera dot C frame. Now what I would like to do is have the camera face the Teddy's head over here. And in order to get the Teddy's head, we're gonna to need to know where the teddy is located because inside this local script, I don't really know how to access the teddy. So what we can do is we can have that as a parameter that we give to the function. So we can say teddy over here, and then we can set the C frame to be equal to teddy.head.c frame. And then we need to send the teddy. So if we go back to our AI script, and over here where we fire the client, we send the player that we want to send it to, and then also we'll pass in uh, Teddy as well, shall we? So let's see if our camera changes now. Okay, so the camera's changing and we're fading out, but that's not quite what we wanted, is it? So let's see what's happening there. Well, if we have a look at the head, and I select the surfaces down here, and we look at the front surface, you can see that one highlights up, and we can see the head C frame, it's actually the front face points this way. So when we tell the camera to go to the C frame, what's happening is it's going in and it's facing kind of about here is what we're looking at, which isn't really what we want. So let's see if we can add a little bit of calculation into it so we can get a bit of a better view of the head rather than going inside of the head. 
So instead of here just saying C-frame, let's add in a rotation first of all. So that's going to add a 90 degree rotation, so it'll be back facing the right way. And they want to zoom out a little bit, so we'll add a little offset. And finally, I'm going to change the field of view a little bit. And once I've made these changes, let's remember to reset them once they've died. So we can actually copy this, paste it down here, but instead of 20, we want to set it back up to 70, which is the default. And we'll copy this, and we'll set that back to the custom, which the default, sorry, which is custom. And maybe we'll add a little, uh, wait half a second, just to make sure they've died. Let's see what happens now, shall we? Okay, he's coming for us. He's coming for us. And there we go, we've got a close above the head. That's pretty much what we're looking for. So that's not a bad start, but it's not too scary either. So let's head back into our local script and we're gonna add in a camera shake this time. How we're gonna do this is we're gonna generate three random numbers. So we're gonna generate a random number for the X axis, and that'll be equal to the math.random. And we want a number between minus one and positive one. So it could be minus one, zero, or one. And we're gonna do the same thing for X, Y, and Z. And then we're gonna set the camera's position, the camera's C-frame, to be equal to its current position. And then we're gonna add on a vector three dot new containing each of these randomized values. So it's just a slight shift from its current position. And then we're gonna put all of this inside a loop because we want it to happen, let's try 20 times. So i equals one 20 do, and we'll pop all of this inside the loop. So repeat. And then we want to wait just a small fraction of a second. Let's try uh, 0.05, very small fraction of a second. And then we're gonna to want to switch the camera back to its original position each time. So it's back centering the head again. So let's create a variable for that, local head view. And that's gonna be equal the C frame that we've just set when we did this calculation up here. So we're gonna set it back to the head view once we've done this uh, shake to the slightly different location. We're gonna wait again and then we're gonna loop back round. So it's keep looping. Well, it's gonna just do 20 times. And then how about we change this value over here? So instead of being 20 studs away from the head, we'll bring it in a little bit closer. So let's try 15. Track Teddy down, there he is. And up close and it's shaking everywhere. And that's a little bit better, isn't it? So now all we need to do is bring it to life with some sound. So if I select Teddy over here, and I'm gonna add in a sound object into his head. Now the reason I add this to the head is so that it's a 3D spatial sound. So if you're close to the head, you'll be able to hear it. And if you're far away on the other side of the map, you might not. But if we just placed it in workspace, for example, then everyone would hear it all the time. So we don't want that. So I've got this sound that I got over from Free Sound. <laughs> and I've uploaded it as a sound to Roblox. So all I need to do is uh, paste in the sound ID over here, and then I'm just gonna change the max distance value. It's currently, what's that, 10,000? We'll just reduce that down to 100, and we'll change the name to uh, attack sound as well. Then if we head into our script, this is in Teddy's AI script on the server, of course, because we want this to play for everyone, not just the local player. So now we just need to locate that sound to play it. So it's located at Teddy, dot head dot attack sound and then we just say the play function and now when we run we should hopefully have it working all right let's turn the volume up so you can hear this <laughs> and then we'll find our good old friend teddy i heard saw him peeking around the side here there he is he's coming for us ah there we go that's much better now Okay, so that just about brings us to the end of this episode. We've got our beautiful jump scare going, and in the next episode, we'll be having a look at getting a menu and lobby system going. So until then, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye, gnomes.